Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello, and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name is Connor McKenna. I'm Carl Stout. And, yeah, there's been some news. <laughs> there's been some emails. Yes, well, yes. Um, so, as you all know, Iron Fist has finally been cast as Finn Jones which a lot of people would probably know him as uh, Loras Terrell from Game of Thrones. And suffice to say, there's been a lot of fisting jokes. Yes. Lots of fisting comments. Now, we do have to say that Marvel and Netflix has n- have not said yes, nor have they denied that he is cast as Iron Fist. Yep. It's looking like he is cast, though, considering the actor himself confirmed it, and a bunch of actual reputable sources, reputable sources, so not Latino Review, have confirmed it as well. So, at this point, yes, he is cast, but, I mean, there's always that really weird off chance that he's not, just because Marvel has pretty much not said it yet, so... Right. Yeah. But, but I doubt it. And so... Supposedly, from the one source I found, uh, he's already done some filming. Yeah. So, well, I guess we'll find out pretty soon. We Um, could find out literally in about 10 days, 12 days, once Daredevil hit? um, Not soon enough, I know that much. I know it's less than two weeks. I need some violence in my life. Um... (laughs) 12 days, I think. Yeah, so uh, if he's done some filming and that source is correct, it wouldn't surprise me if we might see a glimpse glimpse of him in Daredevil. Yeah, which would be interesting. We we definitely should see a glimpse of a certain Steel Serpent. Possibly, I don't know. I have my own doubts with that. I think they planted those seeds for Iron Fist and I don't think they're necessarily coming back in Daredevil. No, you don't think they're going to sow the seeds a little further? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. It's a different showrunner. I know though the, the Iron Fist stuff was uh, Steven's, the previous showrunner, it was his idea specifically to put that stuff in there, so I'm not sure if they'll continue with that. Um, well, we'll find out in about two weeks. I'll be happy either way. I mean, he's been, well, pretty much cast. Um, so yeah, um, so first up, we're just going to address, um, we got an email, so I figured it's a pretty lengthy email, so I figured we'd cover it at the start instead of at the end or something. Um, so yeah, this email is from Todd. And now, t- the funniest part about this email from Todd is we literally got it right after we've recorded saying that we still have yet to receive a single email. Yeah. And then we finished recording and you checked the, the box and you're like, Oh my God, we actually just got an email. That was a huge so, email too. So it's just like, damn. <laughs> so we got a good chuckle off of that. Yeah. Also, sorry you missed last week. There's just a lot of stuff going on. It was just impossible to record. So it happens even despite the big news, but yeah. We're here now, and that's what matters, I think. Well, before we jump right into the email, what are your personal feelings about uh, Finn Jones or Terrence Jones, which is actually his real name, but he didn't want to be called Terry Jones because of the Monty Python actor. Right. He is English, he is 27 years old, and he definitely looks super, super young, which actually works. So he's got the experience as an actor, yet he's got the look of an 18-slash-19-year-old 
returning to New York from Kunlun. So you're asking me what I think of him as Iron Fist? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I can... If he gets a haircut, I can definitely see it. Um, I guess as far as his acting and fight choreography goes, I'll have to wait until the show to be the judge. Because Game of Thrones, like, is, you know, a hammy piece of crap. So you can't really judge anyone's <laughs> acting off that show, really. I've never seen a single episode, unfortunately. I actually have the first two seasons on DVD and then was warned that I can never watch these when the kids are awake, so... Yeah, you probably don't want to. Uh, I just say, read the books, guys. They're better. And even then, they're not Shakespeare, so probably read better books. Um, you know, check <laughs> get out... My, get the books on tape. <laughs> check out some Stephen King, maybe some Bryce Courtney, I don't know. Um, or get the books on tape. That's a good idea, actually. Uh, one of the actors from the show, Parcel, does the uh, reading for it so the audiobooks are quite good anyway oh that's cool um so back to the email yes okay so uh, this is from Todd and it reads as follows Connor and Carl first of all first off ah uh, it's a bit of a typo there first of all this might be long I just discovered your show and I am beyond thrilled I've listened to four episodes already and hope to catch up with you guys soon I'm the host of a Disney podcast myself, and I know how tough it is to get things out every week. We're on episode 120, and it's a labor of love. Anyways, I That's discovered... a lot of podcasts. Yeah. I, I discovered Iron Fist in 1979. I was very young, but would buy Marvel Comics at the market down the road in Nashville, Tennessee. I was a huge fan of Marvel fun and games. I would notice Iron Fist would often appear in the magazine. I immediately started seeking out his character because I liked his mask. So I went to the flea market and found a copy of Iron Fist number one and my dad bought it for me. That's how it began. I spent the next seven years blowing tons of money on comics. We had a comic shop ten minutes from my house. In 1986, when they killed Danny, I just I stopped buying comics. I was just so angry. It's funny because that year a lot of people started buying comics. It's the circle of life. <laughs> I am still a huge fan of the character, I just do not buy comics like I used to, although I will pick up random Iron Fist books. Anyway, here are my questions. It may be you have addressed this, but I've only listened to four shows. I've been looking forward to this Iron Fist show nearly my whole life, and as soon as they announced, I had a thought, I hope they don't screw with the character. Then I saw the NRC Chow article and the campaign that spawned from it. I will confess, as ridiculous and childish as it sounds, I have lost a bit of sleep over it. I just don't want them to mess with Danny. So A, what are your feelings on the AA Iron Fist movement? And B, any clue, insider info on who they are casting? Now, obviously this email is a bit out of date, so he did send us an updated one asking us what we think of the whole... Um, I guess negative side, the blowback of this casting. And there's been a lot to that. And which people probably notice we've been deliberately avoiding talking about this whole movement, but we've been asked now, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Time to address the elephant in the room. Yeah, I mean, it's not much of an elephant, really. Well, it is... I don't know, it's just... Well, I do think it's interesting that there was a huge anti-white hero movement going on. But literally, when they announced that it was somebody from the Game of Thrones, I'm going to say, honestly, about 40% of the anti-white guy movement all of a sudden went, oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, he's from, he's from Game of Thrones. I like that show already, so I guess it's okay. So I, I found that a little odd. I, it, there was still... That 60% was still very vocal and annoying, though. And that's sort of like... Um... Oh, it's... There's st it's still going on. People are now... Originally, before he was cast, you know, shortly after Jessica Jones finished up and they announced Luke Cage was next and... Well, maybe there won't be an Iron Fist. Maybe there'll be a Punisher, and then the Punisher yeah, thing was put to stuff, bed. And, it'll be a and then they said it'll definitely be an Iron Fist. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, there was, uh, you know, sign the petition to make Iron Fist Asian. And all these dumb clickbait, quote unquote, think pieces. Even IGN's doing it. 
Um, and that writer from Marvel, I won't mention their name, but they are a talentless hack, and the bibliography sucks, and nothing that he's written is anything above mediocre, so I don't really count their opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well... So there was all that, and then they announced it, and, and then a lot of the naysayers dropped off, but now there seems to be a movement to, you know don't watch Iron Fist because he's not Asian movement trying to be pushed out. But now, again, Marvel has now just dropped the fact that it looks like they're trying to cast Shang-Chi, who is an Asian martial artist and was around before Iron Fist. So as far as martial art masters in the Marvel Universe... It was an Asian first. Shang Chi came before Iron Fist. Whenever I was, uh, yeah, talking with people about this whole um, Asian Iron Fist thing, I'd always bring up Shang Chi, and they'd just be like, "Oh, that doesn't count." And it's like, "Well, why? <laughs> why doesn't that count?" Um, you know, he was more popular than Iron Fist for a long time. Um, not anymore, but yeah, he was the original kung fu guru of the Marvel universe. And I always thought they would cast Shang-Chi in Iron Fist. Like, well, okay, I, 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 I always thought it would be cool if well, they I know, did they that. met up... Was it a Shang-Chi annual that they met up for the first time? I think so. I mean, I just, I just thought it would be cool so, like, it could appease the Asian-American Iron Fist people and show them that, you know, hey, look, it's Shang-Chi. You know, the Asian guy. Um... Anyway, so, yeah, that, I mean, I guess we'll talk about our thoughts first. I'm not impressed with this boycott Marvel thing. It's like, they didn't get what they want. They didn't, you know, change the characters, and they were just chucking a tantrum. Um, and it's like... And I just see all these, like, tweets and comments and stuff, like, I've never even read Iron Fist, but this seems really messed up. And people are calling it whitewashing and stuff, and it's like, look, it's not whitewashing because the character is white. And, you know, you're complaining about all this stuff now. Shouldn't you have been complaining about this, you know, a bit before? So yeah, it's been it's it's been forty one years, people. Yeah. So like I'm gonna I guess And I, I also have to address this because a lot of people don't take this into consideration. When this character was created, which was in 1974, correct? Yeah. And I believe he came out the end of 74 and rolled right into 75. 97% of comic book readers were what, Connor? Uh, blue? White boys. Yeah. Marvel Comics is a company trying to put out a product that will sell to their clientele. And Marvel, you can see Marvel doing that right now because they're really pushing, um, you know, our range is diverse. Um, and they've got, you know, female Thor, uh, the, although female Thor was around in the 70s. Mm hmm. Um,. The Falcon has taken the mantle of Captain America. Nick yeah. Fury, I think, now is pretty much permanently Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, no, they got rid of White Nick Fury, which upset a lot of people. Um, but you know that was Black, a while ago. So Black Black Panther is taking a finally and Black Panther is a fantastic character. Black Panther should be Marvel's Batman. I know they tried forever to make that into Moon Knight, and it never works. But honestly, Black Panther should be like the Marvel Batman mm. because he's got the money, he's got the technology, he's got the skills, and they are always not using him. He's like the – he'll come in and save the day, and then he'll go right back to Wakanda. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, actually. People complaining about Marvel being diverse, you know, not being diverse in their live action – and, you know, one of the leads of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., if not the lead, is an Asian-American actress. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and you also have a Black Panther movie coming out. you got the Luke Cage show. 
um, yeah, it's just ridiculous. A lot of this, I think, is just people jumping on this bandwagon and then getting really angry about it. Uh, I've heard Tumblr was in an uproar, which is not surprising. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll go through why, in case you haven't figured it out, we're against the um, Asian American Iron Fist thing. Yes. We're both firm supporters that Danny should and needs to be a white kid for what we're going to get into now. We're both firm believers that he started this way, he should stay this way. 41 years of route of uh, history into this. And no, I'm not racist. And Neither no, am I, I. Also, I also didn't vote for Obama, and I'm also not racist in that respect as well, because I live in Australia. <laughs> so, yeah. The... Uh... If you want to be pissed off about a superhero, you should be pissed off about all the superheroes that have been created in the last 20 years that are all still white characters. Why aren't they complaining about Scott Atkins playing um, Wong in Doctor Strange? That's whitewashing, right? Like, Well, so is... Um, oh, God, what the hell is Ancient name? One? Yes, the Ancient One, uh, being played by Tisden there. They have already... A few people have already made comments about that that no one said a thing about that. Yeah. Which... I don't know. Maybe people think these Netflix shows are just... I don't know. Um, Anyway, so, yeah. So, I'll go through my points first, I guess. Um, As we've said before in the show, Iron Fist is a very, like... You know, has a very golden age roots, the character, and a lot of roots in the 30s. How, you know, the whole concept is heavily based off Lost Horizon, where that guy that goes to Shangri La and, you know, goes to achieve enlightenment and stuff, um, which is very similar to Iron Fist in a way. Um, yeah, the thing is, he is, yeah, so a lot of people say he's a, um, a white savior and stuff and it's like you know they just people seem to forget that Iron Fist arrived in Kunlun when he was nine years old you know and like he's appropriating their culture and it's like oh if I went to Japan and became the champion of Kyokushin Karate I suppose I'd be racist and appropriating their culture (laughs) you know there's no merit I mean Iron Fist got to where he was through merit of skill and someone deigned to point out that well, that's easy if you have plot armor because you're the main character. And I'm like, well, you can use that argument for any comic book ever. <laughs> any story ever, really. Um, mm-hmm. Especially comics, because, you know, you can't kill off your main characters. Well, I mean, that's another podcast, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and he's not hes not a white savior. He, he gets the power of the Iron Fist, and then he leaves Kunlun not to be their champion. He you know, rejects being their champion. He just goes out to get revenge, which, as we've covered, doesn't go well for him. No. And, you know, he he fluctuates back and forth from being at peace with himself to being a mess. Um, the most jarring example would be Living Weapon, um, which is not a bad thing. I'm totally on board with that. So, yeah, he's not, he's not the perfect white saber. He's not better than all of them. You know, um, Prince of Orphans and Fat Cobra are better fighters than him and probably more mentally well adjusted as well um yeah and the other thing is this came later but he is the 66th Iron Fist so correct although when to be fair when this stuff was written he was the first Iron Fist yes and the other thing is I'm sure I'm missing a lot here. I didn't write notes because I, quite frankly, couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it just makes you angry. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. It, I shouldn't have to do this. Well, I do this podcast to have fun, you know. Like, right. Um, and the other thing is, with Luke Cage, um, see, Iron Fist is a rich white guy when he comes back to New York. And he's still a fish out of water, I might add, despite the fact that he really should fit in in New York. He doesn't really fit in in either world he's caught in between um I I posted on the Iron Fist page which I admin under Bob Diamond I don't post there much anymore but if Danny's a child of Kunlun or a child of Earth and I think that can bring up some interesting points 
about this argument and just some interesting points in general. But anyway, um, with Luke Cage, you know, it's the rich white guy and the black guy from, you know, the streets. Um, and mm-hmm. people, and if he changed into an Asian American, it would change that dynamic. People will say, no, no, he can still be rich and privileged and stuff. And it's like, well, like it or not, right. it would It'd change become it. rush hour. Yeah, it would change it, like it or not. You know, cha- changing Danny's race would fundamentally change the character, whether you want to admit it or not. Because it's there's so many characters you can race change, but Danny is one of the characters where his race is actually really important to the story. You know, and he goes to Kunlun, and everyone there, when he's training there, pretty much everyone except Lei Kung and UT hate him. They call him outsider, they beat him up and stuff, they hate his guts, and seeing mm-hmm. seeing all these people getting angry at Danny, just, I'm like, huh, you were the guys from Kunlun. <laughs> just, you know, just being so aggressive and hateful. Um, and some of this stuff, after he got cast, was like, really hateful it was just like hate mongering it's just ridiculous um there's plenty of things you can get angry about that deserve a lot more attention than this um i mean Mm -hmm. and you can't get so angry that they cast a white guy to play a white character even if you ignore all of our arguments i mean it's it's (laughs) they're not white the horror the (laughs) horror i know um i guess i've I, I had a lot better points when I was writing this stuff up, like, months ago, but, as I said, I can't be bothered going into this too much. Um, I know, uh, well, aside from a minority, most people who read Iron Fist definitely know that being white is very important to his character, and that he is not some white saviour, and he does actually have a personality and a character of his own. He is not just the white martial artist like you know you can't just race change him and expect it to just be the exact same um yeah I mean I'm just rambling and going in circles because I'm trying to think of my better arguments but I can't but I don't care I'll just let Carl take over from here alright my main thing on why Danny needs to stay a white character and again not racist. If he was an eight, like I, like I just posted on our Facebook page, I have a full complete run of Shang Chi. I was reading Shang Chi before Iron Fist, um, but then I discovered Iron Fist, and I liked that character also, and um, just rolled it. Then I was collecting both for a long time. Um, the whole. Stumbling into Kunlun, a mystical Asian city, to me, I think would be kind of dumb for an Asian character to stumble into an Asian city and then be the outsider slash... For the, for the story they set up, it just works. And, I mean, what are we, is it going to be... Uh, you know, a white Anglo-Saxon city that just happens to practice martial arts <laughs> and an Asian kid stumbles into it. To I be mean, fair, they are arguing for American Asian, so he would be an outsider, but it's not as stark a contrast, if you know what I mean. But my whole thing is, I, I always thought that they were trying to buck against the whole stereotype, because again, we already had the Asian expert martial artist in Shang-Chi. So I always personally looked at Iron Fist as being something to buck the stereotype that you don't have to be Asian to practice martial arts and to be good at martial arts. Especially back at the time as well, because it was... Because the Kung Fu explosion, and other than a few blaxploitation Kung Fu movies, which had just started to edge into that time frame they did come a little later than the comic um if you were watching a kung fu movie you were watching something from overseas there wasn't any really american produced stuff yet so chuck norris was out there but chuck norris wasn't doing any films yet bruce lee thankfully brought him in on that and then chuck got his own thing and a lot of people also have always put that 
Shang-Chi was Marvel's Bruce Lee and Iron Fist was Marvel's Chuck Norris. That's been said a lot. You know who Marvel's Chuck Norris is? Who's Marvel's Chuck Norris? Bob Diamond. Well, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <I'm> like it. <laughs> so, well, he even looks like Chuck Norris. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's, just, you know, an actor too. And that, and that's that's another great example. That whole group, that whole group is made up of everybody. Mm. Oh, if you ask if you ask any of these people, like you know, who are boycotting it and stuff, they wouldn't know who Sons of the Tiger are, and they might eat. Yeah. Sons of the Tiger was a white guy, an Asian woman, a black man, and an Asian guy. It's like Ooh. a freaking. Or was he Spanish? Uh, He's a Spanish guy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Spanish. I mean, I. Can't remember. It's been so long since I've read. And then le- later on, because they all had a piece of an amulet. And then later on, uh, the Spanish guy was the one who had all three pieces of the amulet. And that's the one who was in the solid white suit who looked like the tiger. And then it became the Spanish woman because he passed away. I won't even get into that because you should read that story. He passed, and Daredevil was evolved. Mm. He passed away, and uh, years later. Uh, the amulets arrived at Agent, I can't remember her last name, <laughs> her door, and then she became the White Tiger, which is the White Tiger that has been in the comics for the last few years, the White Tiger that's been in the cartoon, mm. and it's the one pretty much everyone thinks of now when you mention Her White name Tiger. is Agent Less Interesting than the previous White Tiger. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but Danny's the outsider. Danny is brutally made fun of. Danny is brutally beaten. Uh, and that's part of the story that Danny overcomes all this. Not only does he overcome the bullying and the name calling and the hate, he overcomes them all by becoming the best, by not only striving for revenge, but striving to show all these people wrong. Great part of the story. Uh-huh. Achieves what needs to be achieved then basically spits in their face and say, yeah, I'm now your champion, but guess what? I'm out because i got stuff to do. I have to still avenge my my folks. Yeah, so he leaves so, them in the lurch, pretty much. So he leaves them in the lurch. He leaves the fabled city of Kunlun, where pretty much everything is perfect if you're not white because it wasn't perfect for Danny, let's be honest. Or a woman. <laughs> or, yes, or a woman in these yeah. early issues and <laughs> stuff. Uh, so he goes to New York City where he's from and finds out that once again he's the fish out of water he doesn't know anything of what's going on he doesn't have a place he's wandering the city I don't even think he shows up with money I also don't know how he got there (laughs) Mm. because it's never been addressed he hikes mountains in China to boom New York City without a dime (laughs) but anyways who does he immediately become best friends with? Colleen. Colleen Wing. Asian American. Asian American. Then, who does he become friends slash lovers with? Misty Knight. Misty Knight. Strong, powerful. This is the seventies people. A strong, powerful black woman. Then, who does he meet in the police force? Raphael Scarf. Be- Spanish. So now we have oh, a yeah. white guy who's best friends with an Asian woman, who's the lover of a black with a black woman, who's also good friends with a Spanish police officer. Then it goes even further to team him up with a strong black male leading character who also happens to be an ex con. All the people, Steel Serpent, and all the people he has dealt with from Kunlun, Asian. What I'm basically saying is the Iron Fist story is the biggest melting pot of all the ethnicities out there. And it should be embraced. It should be looked on and said, this was good. I can't believe this was even being done in the 70s. I mean, Captain America teamed up with the Falcon, and that was a big deal. But this was just as big, if not bigger, a deal. And now we're getting people doing the opposite. 
saying that Iron Fist is the opposite, and that's just not right, because, well, of all the points that Carl just said, really. And uh, if anything, I think this whole storyline, especially with all the crap that's being drugged up now with the racism and the, you know, half Spanish, half white guys killing kids in the middle of the night and cops shooting people and all the crap that's going on. It's it's this type of story that should be looked upon that says everybody should be getting along. There's no reason to hate anybody because of their skin color or where they come from or how much money they have. I you know, at... hate, a per- hate a person for being an a-hole. Not of any of the other things I've mentioned because that's how you should judge people. Greet everybody open-minded. And, you know, let their actions decide whether you're going to be their friend or not. Not, you know, the money in their wallet, the car they drive, the color of their skin, or who they're dating even. Yeah. That's got nothing to do with the person. And then there's, I mean, even the current Power Man and Iron Fist series just, you know, it's not involved in any of this crap. Like, it's nope. just going on like it normally is. They're just hanging out, being buddies. Best um, friends. Yeah. Oh, and another great point in this whole storyline because it's all still connected Luke Cage winds up marrying a white woman Mm -hmm. Jessica Jones yep and they they, and now they have a daughter that they're raising and they even named their daughter after Danny wow giant melting pot that's all I'm saying the story's already (laughs) this the story is a giant freaking melting pot yeah but no, Carl, you're wrong because Iron Fist is white, therefore it's all racist because he's the main character. So, shut Damn up. Damn it! You're racist. I know, I just <sighs> disproved all of your arguments. Boycott Iron Fist hashtag. I've never read Iron Fist, but it just seems like such a... <laughs> such a... Like, I can't believe this is actually happening. Oh my god. Wait a minute. White people can't do martial arts. That's racist. Yeah, no, I mean... God. It's so racist. <sighs> He can't. He can't dance either. <laughs> uh, anyway, I guess that sums up how we feel. Um, actually, that that guy Todd who sent us an email, I'll, I'll link a um article he wrote, which I only read half because I only had time to read half of it. But it's you know very in depth and uh, good discussion of why he shouldn't be um, American Asian as well. Um, Maybe we'll throw it up in the uh Yeah. Put it up in the show, show notes. notes. I'll put it up on the page as well. I'm not sure if anyone actually reads the show notes, but I'll keep doing them. Um <laughs> It's hard to tell. I read them. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay, well that's someone. <laughs> yeah, and that being said, like we didn't as I said, we didn't want to talk about this stuff because we don't want to get politics involved in this podcast. Yeah. Like we just want to talk about mm-hmm. Iron Fist. And unfortunately, we just had to cover this because, well, people asked, and, you know, it is news, and we are an Iron Fist podcast, so... And it's getting way too much news. Yeah. Yeah, it's just getting way too much news. It's so silly. I can't believe how silly this is, like... And everyone I know who's read Iron Fist, and then I tell them about, like, how it's caused an uproar, and they're just... They're just, like, you know... (laughs) Some of them are shocked. They just... They just honestly don't understand what the problem is. Um... And, uh, yes, some of those friends are not white or native to a white country. Put that thought... Say it isn't so. I know, right? It's crazy. It's just absolutely (laughs) insane. What's happening to this world? You know? God. (laughs) It's like... It's like... Yeah, anyway. (laughs) Uh, I wish we could... I miss talking about John Byrne and just slamming his personality while acknowledging he's a brilliant writer and artist. Um, Uh, we'll get we'll get back to that. Don't you worry. We'll get back to that. Yes, yes, we will. Yeah. So um, next week we'll be resuming our schedule as normal. We will uh, be covering Yay. the next time. Back to issue. fun stuff. Yay! Unless it turns out to be really awful, like that Iron Man issue, and we're both just sort of going, oh, <laughs> as we're going through it. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It's good. It's good. Uh, and um, guess what? Guess what? Danny fights Asians. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, he totally does. Yeah, as the next issue 
The next issue was a mixed bag for me, and I'll go into that next week. It's very mixed bag for me. There was just two moments where I was just like, man, what? <laughs> so, yeah. Another great, another great face shot of Danny, though. <laughs> Probably. I can't remember, but I'm sure there is there somewhere. Well, I think it's right on the first page of him looking utterly exhausted, like he's going like, to yeah. vomit. Yeah. It's a, it's a decent issue though. It has it has spoiler, it has our favorite person, Alan. In a yes. one page interlude which feels really jarring and out of place. Completely. It's just like <laughs> Oh, oh boy, oh I'm Danny's best friend, blah blah blah. Shut up. We know. <laughs> you weirdo. <laughs> uh, so um if we've yeah. Uh, feel free to send us any mail and stuff about this, and you know if we've. Yes, your I'm thoughts. I'm sure. I'm sure we've missed some points, but whatever. I just wanted to get this out of the way, to be honest. So, um, yeah, because it's not even a thing for us, really. Like it's it's almost not the only reason it's actually worth discussing is because there's so many people who seem to think that's the other way around. Otherwise, I wouldn't even you know bring it up, as we haven't even brought it up really. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, all these people who keep harping on about it, they just obviously don't care about Danny himself. They just care about their own agenda. And, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, cool. So, uh... And uh, just to shoot this out there, that the, the comic book companies are constantly looking for new heroes. Mm-hmm. So, if you think there should be more of something, come up with an idea get together even with friends who you think are better writers than yourself, get something on paper and present it. Yep. Believe it or not, they will look at it. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Stop looking to race change, people. And I'll say this for, like, Wong and stuff as well, you know. Just keep them the same and just make new characters. Exactly. I guess I guess Wong is a bit different because he's not the main character, but still. And I love Scott Atkins. In fact, I know a lot of people were... Uh, wanting him to play Iron Fist or even Orson Randall, but I guess that is sadly not on the cards anymore. Um, no. Yeah. However, there is still the rumor that we will see Doctor Strange first in the Iron Fist Netflix show. Hmm. That would be interesting. Um, so, I'm just going to quickly plug Todd's podcast. So it's Go for it. WDW for families. The four is a number, and it's a family-friendly Disney Disney podcast. And there's like, I think right now there's 132 episodes there. So if you're into that stuff, there's plenty of material there. Um, Holy smokes! So and as you know, out. Disney owns Marvel now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I swear, I swear, Pete. Uh, actually, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you about that after the episode's finished. <laughs> Anyway, so, um, I think that about wraps us up. It definitely wraps it up. Alright, so guys, until next time, have a good one. May your fist become unto, like, things of iron and stuff. And enjoy comics, don't let anyone bring you down. And, uh, peace. Read what you like. Peace. Yep. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. And any music or images we use belong to their respective copyright holders, and we do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at sonsofthedragonpodcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, send us anything you want really, even if it's not about Iron Fist. Um, and if you don't want it read it on the air, just mention that. Um, you can also reach us at Facebook, The Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon, our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast, our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash sons of the dragon with hyphens where the spaces are our youtube connor carl just search iron fist podcast on youtube and you'll find us real quick and then there's our wordpress sons of the dragon the immortal iron fist podcast dot wordpress.com we are also on itunes feel free to rate us there if you rate us less than five stars well just tell us what we're doing wrong and we'll try and improve that and last but not least we are on podcast garden in the literature section And thanks to Thomas Tissot for the theme song at the start. And thanks.